Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Streaming Alchemy. I'm John Mahoney, and on today's show, we're going to look at how you can leverage data stored in Google Sheets into your vMix productions. But before we get there, I'd like to take uh, this opportunity to invite everyone, please, if you have any questions, have any feedback, become part of the conversation. Just drop it in the comments below, and you know we'd love to have you, uh, you know, engage with the show. Also, if you'd like to join us here live on air, uh, please, you can contact us at the link in the lower third. It's also in the show notes. And somebody from the team will get you on air with me and, you know, we can discuss a topic or answer questions directly. So we'd love to have you be part of the show. All right. So let's dig in. So one of the things that I wanted to capture here is that you have the ability to leverage lots of external data sources inside of vMix. And that's one of the like superpowers in vMix, uh, one of many, actually. So this is something that uh, I think we're going to go through in, in much more detail over different shows. But for this show, what I wanted to look at was how you could connect data stored in Google Sheets into vMix. And there's two reasons. First, I mean, we've covered XML uh, integration into vMix using you know, Data Sources Manager. But what makes Google Sheets different is that this is across the web and can be done remotely. So you can have one person making entries in Google Sheets and somebody in a total, totally different location leveraging that data in their vMix production. So, to get started, what I first want to do is we'll switch over to vMix here on the screen. And let's go into GT Title Designer, because this is where uh, we have everything set up. So we just click on this little hamburger menu down here and go to GT Title Designer. I have it open here already, so we'll just slide that in here. And this is the template inside of vMix that we're going to be using for this. Actually, before I jump in here, let me just capture everybody that's popped in on the messages. So we have Samuel from Norway. Samuel, thank you very much for joining us here. Uh, we have Richard from Northern California. <laughs> Richard, always great to see you. And uh, we also have the same Peter from Berlin. Peter, thanks for joining us here again. We have uh, James from Arkansas. James, thank you. And, uh, okay, Peter just mentioned that uh, Excel Google Sheets as data sources is great, uh, as, with, uh, as with working with some people. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I think when you have this, when you look at how this setup works, there's a lot of different workflow things I think you can design around it. So that's, uh, that's great. Thank you, everybody, for uh, popping in to say hi. So let's get back to the GT Title Designer template we have here. So this is a very straightforward template. What we have is a background image. We have another image that we're going to be using for uh, putting the panelist faces there. And then we have layers with text. So each one of these is, is named. So as you look at different elements here, you can see when I click on their name on the side, they are all highlighted. So this allows me now to take elements that are inside GT Title Designer, inside this title that we've set up, and map data to them because we're going to be using these names as a way to link the data with the specific elements in this title. So that was the real reason for diving in here. And you know, we can do GT Title Designer in more detail. There's a lot of stuff in that on its own, but we'll do that in another show. So let me slide this off. So when you want to take and bind data to a title, you go into vMix's Data Sources Manager. And that is, again, going to this little hamburger menu in the lower right. Very top is Data Sources Manager. And so let me see. If we click here, I want to add something new. So we're going to go and do Google Sheets. And this is exactly what you do. When you want to add a new data source, you just go in, click the plus, and take the type of data source you want to work with. So 
we're going to give this a pretty specific name because we want to be able to use this. So we're going to call this event panel. So, so that's the name. Now, what it's showing us is that we need two other pieces of information. We need a URL and we need a Google API key. So let's start with the easy one first, uh, and that is we'll open up a Google Sheet and get the URL for that. So let me just slide this over here. Uh, so we'll go to Google Sheets, which is just google.com slash sheets, and it will get you into this about page. It's typically going to be, for most people, a personal account. So you just say go to Google Sheets. And when you go there, it actually gives you a home page similar to what you'd see in Excel, where it shows all of your current sheets that you have available. <coughs> oh, excuse me. And, uh, or you can create a brand new one just by clicking on the blank. We have a sheet already set up. So we're going to click on that and open that. And it will open up here in Google Sheets. So the way we have this sheet set up is the top row, or it will typically be the names of the items that you have in your sheet. So we have panelist name, we have panelist title, we have an organization. We included a number in case at some point with scripting or something, we might want to do something there. And then what we're also doing, I don't have a label on top of this because we want to be able to show something a little bit later. We have the URL of the image that goes with that panelist. So this can be lots of different things, but for this case, we're just using panelist images, and we have those stored as URLs. So this gives us a lot of information that we can use in lower thirds. So to, if you remember in vMix, it said, let's get uh, a URL of the sheet. And the way you do that is way after you've opened your Google Sheet, you click on this share button, this green button in the upper right-hand corner. And that will load up this page. And what you want to do is you want to say, I want to get a link. And there's two pieces to this. Click on this get link box here, and it spreads it out a little bit. So this is the link that vMix is looking for. So we'll just go and copy that link. And that link will come up and say it's copied. But the other thing you're going to need to do is make sure that you have anyone with this link can access it. This will just, I mean, you may be able to do this in a more secure way, but I think for right now, this will get you fully connected. And somebody actually has to have this link in order to connect. So as long as you're not publishing this link, you should be OK. So with this done, we'll close this down. And let me slide this out of the way. And we now have the first piece of what we need here, which is the link of the Google Sheet. So the next thing we need is the Google API key. And this one is a bit more complicated. So I'm going to go through this uh, in detail, but you know, we'll, we'll also post sort of the notes for what you need uh, after this so that you'll have this sort of as a checklist you can use to get yourself set up. So let's drag this back, and we'll click on another tab here, and we'll go to Google Dev. So what this is, it's uh, I don't have it down somewhere, but it's really just console.developers.google.com. And so uh, we'll post that URL later as well. But this gets you into what is basically the developer dashboard. And so we're going to need to do a couple of things. So the first thing that we're going to need to do is we're going to need to go and create a new project. So everything that works with Google's API set works around projects. So if you see here, we have this button on the right-hand side called Create a Project. And so this will go and open up a new project, and you can give it a name. So let's do something that will be meaningful. So since this is Streaming Alchemy, we have Google Sheets demo. It's already set here. And that will be the name of the project we have set up here. So we'll go and click Create. And it takes a little bit of time to get that through. OK. 
Okay, so now that we have this here, this, we have a new project created, and you can see now that the project that we're in is Google Sheets demo. So the next thing we can do is we can go to the library, and what this will let us do is select, okay, we set up a project, so what is the Google technology platform we're going to be talking to? What API set are they going to be using? So for this, it's going to be Sheets. So we'll just type Sheets in there, hit Enter, and it's going to come back and say, okay, this will be Google Sheets. So with this set, we know this is what we want, so we're going to enable it. Okay, so this takes its own time here. So let me just jump back here. Couple. And what we're going to do now that we have this project set up and that we've assigned uh, Google Sheets to this project is we're going to go into credentials. So this is where we're actually going to get the API key. So when you go into here, You'll remember where it says right up here, we're going to create credentials. And the first thing in the list of cr credentials we can create is an API key. So we'll get the API key. And you can see here that API key has been published. So we're going to copy that. Let's copy to the keyboard, uh, to the clipboard. And, you know, we could do other things. We could rename it or, or whatever. But this is actually the second piece to what we need to do. So with this API key in hand, let me go over to this and we'll paste this in and we should be ready. So now with all that information in here, we have now connected to our Google Sheets. So now with this connection made, let me jump up and we'll go back to our uh, comment section and, you know, connect with everybody here. So who else? We have uh, David uh, Ramirez has joined us uh, from Costa Rica. David, great to see you again. Uh, Sase has joined us. Hello, Sase. Thank you. Uh, so uh, uh, the Zion Christian Church. Uh, so they have joined us and they actually had a question uh, so they said they uh, were using Google Sheets for translation. Uh, this resulted in higher render times and frames would drop. Yeah, I'm not sure what would cause that uh, in particular uh, because this shouldn't be something that you'd have to deal with with bandwidth and especially the fact that I mean, Google Sheets is very low bandwidth. Uh, there are limitations on uh, how many queries you can make. So there may have been something with that that was causing some networking delays. But I, I don't have a specific answer, but would definitely uh, love to talk to you. Maybe in the after show, uh, if other people have ideas, we could dig into that. Uh, uh, so we also have uh, Dave Christensen from o Oklahoma. Dave, thank you. And I am told that we have a caller. So uh, please. Hello. How are you? Hello. I'm fine. How are you? Very good. So, That's good. who's this? I just want to. Oh, this is uh, Peter from oh, uh, Peter. Germany. Yes. <laughs> Sorry. It's hard to take the little icon that you see in the, the corner and translate it in person. So, sorry about that, Peter. So, <laughs> no worry. That's fine. So, thank you. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, I also use a lot of uh, Google Sheets and, uh, and Excel Sheets. Uh, it yep. depends uh, on what I'm doing. Um, I have one show. It's um, it's like a DJ show with uh, vinyl records, and yep. um, I have a, a sheet for um, all the records where we have uh, all the titles and all the, the covers of the of the records. Yep. And um, I fire them out if the record pop up. Um, then if they, uh, yeah, that's uh, I have to always to because uh, this is um, the feeling of the DJs. They all um, they don't want to work on a list, so I have a. I have a list with uh, about 400 uh, uh, records in it, and I have to <laughs> um, uh, to look what what record it is, and then I have to choose this uh, item. I have um, on my stream deck. I have uh, a lot of um, um, shortcuts for this, and uh, um, and then I have a notebook where I search for the title, and then I, I fire it up, and then 
uh, we can we can bring it in. And uh, on the other hand, I have um, I'm working uh, for a new university, and uh, we have every half a year we have um, uh, it's like a, this uh, COVID thing. We have a we have a show like um, um, introducing every course, and we have um, we have about uh, twenty different um, departments who all um, have some courses and they um, they 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 show all their, their courses and um, what I do is uh, I have a Google sheet where everyone can uh, put their names and uh, their subjects and everything inside and then I have a production sheet where everybody who's in the studio yep. um, can see what is next and uh, what is the subject and what is to do I also put in this table um, for for my info screen and we have it also on a big screen for all the participants um, uh, I put everything what what I have to do for the next show, what I have to prepare, like um, uh, what is uh, uh, the next topic? What uh, is, is, there a is there a movie or something what uh, what I have to to bring into, and uh, or is it a caller? I have also yep. um, so all the callers uh, named there with with their numbers. So um, if I have a little team, then first uh, some can invite uh, the guest. We have, we have in Vmix just uh, eight callers and. Uh, if we have over 60 people uh, speaking on at one day, uh, we have always to to change and, uh, yeah. and to bring out the, the numbers. And you wouldn't want to be doing that's that. That's how I Photoshop. use. Yep. <laughs> Sorry. You wouldn't want to be doing all those lower thirds in Photoshop and everything. That would no. that would be brutal. No, no, no. <laughs> so, but the yeah, I mean, I think having data in a way that you can start to integrate it into produ productions. I mean, we talk about lower thirds a lot, but it does fit with so many different frameworks, you know, graphical, uh, it can it can be things like you mentioned that you're also using Excel. So Excel has sort of macros and good search capability. So you could almost build something where if you typed an artist or the name of the show, you could see a list, you could select somebody on that list, hit a button, and that could get written to a column which would update everything in vMix. So you, you have these simpler, ways to access it you don't have to necessarily scroll through four or five hundred you know names yeah. um, what what i actually do is um i have for all the covers i have also the the pictures as a as a file name inserted so it's always just a number but uh, i um i i uh, just um uh, string cut it in in, in in excel so i have the full link and what i also do is um i have uh, in every row, I have a link for a shortcut for vMix, uh, the, the web uh, yep. web shortcut. So if I find the, the title, then I click on the link, and then um, a web browser opens and it uh, fires up uh, uh, the shortcut to vMix. That's how I do it. So I don't have to search for a number or something. So yep. if I have the, run, the right uh, column, you uh, know, the, the right uh, row, then I just uh, push the link. Excellent, excellent. So, Peter. Thank you very much for sharing that. Uh, this is great because I, I think the whole point is getting people to be motivated to, to try to push into that next area. And there's, there's a lot of stuff around data that production automation and data go hand in hand. And I think as you start to do more of one, you'll do more of the other because it, it's just how it, how it optimizes. So Peter, okay. thank you very much for joining us. Yeah, thank you very much. Have a nice day. You too, take care. Thank you. Bye. Okay, so let's see. Uh, we before I jump back, uh, we have uh, Mike uh, made a comment as well. He said, "When I stream to client websites, I have someone copy and paste audience comments and questions from a chat box below the video into Google Sheets." So yes, yeah, so another great use case where you're just taking this out and making it available into vMix. So thanks for sharing that, Mike and Peter. Thank you for giving us a call. Always, always great to have people call us. So let's get back to uh, starting to tie in this data that we just linked into the uh, lower thirds that we have set up here. So if we switch over here, uh, you can see now that I have event panel set up, you can see that it has all the data that we pulled in. And you'll also notice that there are two sheets inside this Google Sheet, two sort of workbook pages. So you could pick either one of them. So it's pulling the data from both of these worksheets. So that's something to keep in mind. And we're updating it every five seconds. 
So there is a limit to how many times you can query uh, Google for refreshes. And that typically is, I think they say, 100 queries every 100 seconds. Uh, so if you exceed that, then they'll throttle you and you won't be able to, uh, to do queries uh, you know, for some period of time until you are freed up again. So something to keep in mind. Also keep in mind that every one of the worksheets, so we have two here, that's going to be doing two separate queries, one for each worksheet. So that means that we're doing two queries every five seconds, which sort of falls under uh, 100 every 100 seconds. So I know we should be good, but just keep that in mind as you start to uh, think about how to do this. And if you up this number, you could run out of uh, queries pretty quickly. So also keep that in mind. So how do we actually link this all together? So let me close this up now that we've seen the data come in. And we're going to take a look at the lower third panel that I have here. This is just the GT Title Designer. And what you do is you right click on this and you'll see there's a tool called Title Editor. So this is not GT Title Designer. What this will let you do is it will let you map, basically edit the data in it, but also map it to data sources. So this is, this is where you'd go if you wanted to put different people's names in already that you had preset. You can do all that down here. We're going to be focusing instead on data sources. So the first one we'll put in is names. So we go up here, and let's see. For data sources, we want to go to events panel. It's the sheet that we're using was panel one. And the column we're going to go to will be the second column, which should be the name. And that, you can see here, is the panelist name. So we say OK. Now we'll go to the title. So we want to get that in. So the again, the same thing, data sources, event panel, panel one. The column is going to be column three, which you'll see is panelist title. And we'll say OK to that. We're going to take the organization text. So we'll go here, all the same. The organization text is the fourth column. And then what we want to do is we want to also have a panelist image. So we'll go here, go to event panel, go to the fifth column. And the point, the reason I didn't just put a title here is we're using a URL to do this. So that means that we can have these images stored out on the web as well. And this means that everything we're doing with pulling in data is coming from a remote source. And that makes this really powerful. You could have somebody from an organization uh, upload all their images to a location. You could pull those in. You could actually have somebody else outside of the production space handling all this for you as well. That's kind of uh, a bit what Mike was talking about before uh, when he has to deal with people working with sheets external from him. So with this in place, what I've now done is I've mapped all of the data sources we have over to our vMix title. So if I were to just call this title up, so you just see here, you now see it just has the default names in here. So what would we have to do? In vMix, there is, there is a series of shortcuts that are dealing with data. So let me go over to the settings over here. And we're going to open shortcuts. And so I've set up a whole bunch of them here. <clears throat> but uh, let's just take a look. The way I'm going to be doing this is we're going to be using a function. So let's just edit this. We're going to be uh, using a function that works around uh, setting up all of the uh, picking, basically picking the row inside a data source that we want to leverage. So let me do this here. So this is called data source select row. And there is a whole set of data source function uh, shortcuts inside of vMix. So data source select row says, which row in the data source do I want to use? And that is just the rows inside my spreadsheet. So I can pick one out specifically at, that I want. But I could also do things where I go to the next and the previous, or I can do something as more of a playlist where I just want to run through them. So 
right now, we're going to be doing something called data source, uh, data source uh, select uh, row, which gives me, lets me pick the row. So with this in place, we actually are using a dynamic variable for this. So whatever arguments we place in dynamic value one, that's going to be what the row that we're going to select. And the way you select a row, let me sort of jump back here and go back to the person I originally opened here, is you have to say, what's my data source? If you remember, our data source was event panels. So that's when we set this up inside of the data source manage manager. We chose event panels for our Google Sheets data source. We then pick the workbook inside of that data source. And so we pick panel one, which is our first workbook. And then I'm saying I want to have row one in here. So this will, with this set up, I now can, when I select any one of these buttons, that will set up the dynamic variable. And then when I tell it to call up that, basically set that into my, as my selected row, you will end up seeing that on screen. So we have these set up using a stream deck. So let's actually just take a look at the stream deck too. So over here on the stream deck, uh, let me get this up. Just hold on one second. So, okay. So over here on the stream deck, uh, maybe pull that out a little bit here. Uh, well, well, we'll make it work. So I have a set of buttons over here from one to four, and then a little bit a little button on the top that says select source. So if I just, I'll push button one. So what this is doing is it's setting the dynamic variable to say I want to select row one. And then when I say select source, I am now pulling the data in from the dynamic variable here. So the, uh, this is giving me the image and the name, the title, and the company. So that's all the information that we have here for this dynamic source. And if I were to pick the second one and do the same sequence, I now can just call these up one at a time. And uh, you will now get, very simply, I can now, based on picking a number, pick which one of my panelists I want, and using that dynamic value, push that out on the screen. So that's one thing. So let me pop this off. The other option that I have here is to uh, actually put up a lower third than just tab through the different uh, shots that we have in this. So if I were to do that, let me just go here and we'll say we want to pick start with the first guest. So let's see, jump back here. Oh, so what this will let me do is it will let me pick a guest and then it'll come on and the guest will come off. When I press it the next time, what I end up with now is a, uh, a auto forward to the next row. So each one of these things that I'm pressing here, let me see if I can slide this over, that might make it a little easier. So each time I'm pressing this, it calls up the next person in the row. So it allows me to do these types of things where you're going to be introducing people. And I can just, that I'm just using uh, data source select next uh, at the end of this. And that's a little script that I'll jump into. Uh, the other thing that we can do is I can just call this up. And I have here at the bottom select previous and select next. So I can just move through each of these which gives me a very simple way to sort of bounce through each one of the guests. And where this could be useful, let me just, if I take this as a, and move over to put my, uh, my title in my preview, I can now uh, pull this down. We'll take the display off. I can go ahead and select the person that I want and then pull them up. So this gives me a very simple way to sort of
preview what I'm doing. I want to pick, no, that was the wrong one. I want to pick that one. No, I want to pick the first person. And then you just go and say, okay, now I put this up. So this gives us an easy way to do uh, this type of selection with the data sets that we've already pulled in. So uh, let me, as sort of as a, as a last thing here, uh, let me actually just go and show you a little bit of the script that we pulled together for this. So first thing is, the way I have this set up is in shortcuts, if you look right here where I have display plus next, this is a script start dynamic. And what that is, it's basically a shortcut that you can then put text in for doing any type of scripting that you want. So I actually have that script right over here. So all it's doing, and it, it, it's a fairly simple script. So all that we're doing here is we are using the API function call to turn off overlay input one, uh, uh, overlay, uh, you know, which is basically overlay one on input one, which is where we have our title. So this makes sure that we shut that off and that should take care of that. Then the next thing we're doing is we're sleeping for a quarter of a second. That just provides a little pacing in here. So we should be good with that. And then what we do is we put the lower third on, sleep for five seconds, which basically lets that overlay stay up, that lower third stay up for five seconds. We then, uh, after that five seconds is up, we then pull that overlay down. And then the last thing we do, we wait a quarter second again, and the last thing we do here is we are going to the next data source in the row, you know, the next row in the, the spreadsheet, which is the next item, the next guest that we want to have. So I have the API function with a next a data source next row, and I'm telling it the same things we basically had in our dynamic value, where we're saying it's data sources events panel, it's panel number one, it's the sheet. So it's just, you know, it knows what row it's at and it's going to the next one. So there's next row, there's previous row, but that's pretty much how we're able to do this. And it creates a nice little automation for this. But, uh, you know, there's a lot more certainly that we can do with uh, lower thirds. And that's something we're going to be covering in our next show. Now that we sort of looked at how to connect these uh, Google Sheets up, we're going to be looking at some of the cool things that we can do with them here inside of vMix using scripting this time, you know, sort of a step beyond the function-based scripting here into actual scripting with XML. So before we wrap up, I just want to check. I think we had uh, we have one more person as joined us, Team 4M uh, from Munster, Germany. Uh, Team 4M, thank you for joining us. Uh, I appreciate you taking the time here. So that I think covers everything. Uh, I know there was a lot of different you know, topics that we, we touched on here from working with Google to doing things inside of data sources and vMix to a little bit of scripting with function calls. So hopefully you know, this, this got you thinking about some things that you could be doing with Google Sheets or with data in general. But uh, that's all for this show. So we'd love, if you have any questions or want to just hang out and talk, it can be about today's show. It could be about any streaming or video production topics. We'd love to have you stay for the post show. But uh, if you cannot, thank you very much. Uh, we'll be back in a few seconds. But if you're not going to join us for the post show, we'll see you next week. Thank you for taking the time to join us today. Take care, everyone. All right, everyone, welcome to the post show. So uh, hopefully uh, you found this uh, interesting. I know this, this is topics that we've touched on before, but I thought it was really important to look at this with Google Sheets. Uh, it's, there's a lot of external data sources that I think we all could be integrating. Uh, and Google Sheets is great because it's one that we control. 
So uh, we being, you know, as producers, we can set all this up ourselves and have somebody else uh, be entering the data for us and have that sort of across the web coordination. And uh, it's, it's really flexible and it's free for, you know, these types of personal accounts. So that's something I think that could be uh, useful for everyone. Uh, the latency in this is actually not bad because that five seconds is kind of the, it's polling every five seconds. So if you make changes, your average change time is going to be somewhere in the middle of that, you know, somewhere between, you know, two and four seconds, you're probably going to find is from the time an update is made to the time you see it in the studio. And I'll be honest, that is not bad at all. Uh, this also makes it very easy to have somebody else double check everything. So you could actually have a client uh, working with a sheet here to, you know, check all the spelling, put pictures up, other things like that. And that, you know, when you're dealing with so many different things in a workflow, having somebody else outside of the people who are getting the cameras and the audio and everything set up to do switching done, uh, pushing that off to some other element in the organization or with the, or the client you're working with can make things a lot simpler. So uh, we think that's th there are also some interesting things. I mean, we, when we talked about what we could potentially do for today's show, uh, we, we were thinking a lot about how could you use this to do automation? So that may be a future show, but we were thinking, wouldn't it be cool if I could have somebody remote uh, change something, trigger a, a, a shortcut or a script inside vMix from a, a remote location. Uh, because you're changing data and you have that ability, that could be pretty interesting. So that may be something uh, we'll take a look at at a future show. So Mike, uh, he said, great content explanation. Thank you. Uh, how reliable have you found Google Sheets to be? Uh, so we don't use, I mean, because we do everything sort of in a local uh, single location here. We don't use them in production. I have heard, you know, because we, we had Peter F. from Berlin was on, and he uses it all the time in things he does, and he seemed, you know, very uh, comfortable with it. Uh, the functionality inside of Google, especially Google Sheets, which they really listed as one of their enterprise-grade uh, APIs, I, I would believe that to be at least as reliable as, you know, a, a Gmail account, a, a uh, you know, what you'd have for a corporate Gmail account, which is what we use as well. So definitely uh, we're, we're satisfied with that. Is it 100%? I, I can't speak to that. Uh, but, you know, if that were an issue, there are probably ways to do things as, as backup where, you know, you could, you could actually have, you know, use it, an Excel spreadsheet and just export that as uh, CSV uh, from the Google Sheets into the Excel spreadsheet and use that or just use CSV files, which are also there. So there may be some ways to do this, which wouldn't be perfect, uh, but definitely, you know, we've had no issues. Like when we followed the steps I sort of laid out here, we've had no issues with, making sure that connection happens, getting the API keys, doing the uh, data sources connection in vMix. So that's worked really well for us. But uh, yeah, so I mean, Peter's saying you can change the update time. He says sometimes there's a timeout for you know, some number of seconds. But uh, I think that's, that probably is, 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 given that it's a free resource, that's probably not a, a, bad, uh, a bad option. Uh, one thing to keep in mind, and this is <clears throat> this is something that we actually talked about internally, so I, I, I figured it would be good to share. We were asking about what if you just wrote something into a shared drive like Dropbox or you know OneDrive or something like that. The one thing to keep in mind with that is that these typically work by having a local cache running on everybody's systems, and then centrally there is a component that polls these caches for changes, resolves figuring out who has the latest copy of everything, and then propagating any changes out to all of those remote caches. So 
there could be some latency in that and potentially more latency than would be acceptable inside of production. So if you're going to be using a shared drive to do these types of things, uh, I would definitely check that out and make sure the latency is low enough and consistent enough for the types of productions you're going to set up, uh, be setting up for. So just something to keep in mind. When we set these images up, we're taking them from URLs. So those files were written out directly to a sort of a web-based space, and that URL link now is, is being pulled in. So we're not doing a file system you know, mask you know, on, on each edge. This is actually just a link, a direct URL link to an image on the, the internet. So that gives us that sort of dependable latency uh, and performance. So that's something, as I said, to keep in mind as you think about different ways to work with data remotely. But uh, so uh, what we'd like to do next week, because uh, you know we realize that there are limitations when we use just the vMix uh, shortcuts. So what we'd like to do for next week is is actually look at uh, some of the ways that we could script to work with things where you could have multiple panels and pick different panels and have the script keep track of everything and make sure you're pulling the right data from the right places in your uh, in your vMix sheets data sources. So that's really what we're thinking about doing for next week's show. So would would definitely if there's anything specific you'd like or some particular use case you'd like to see us do around that, please just share it in the comments or you know, post it in the Facebook group. But that would be great. So Peter just also has another point. He said. Uh, so there's also a problem if some people make changes in the same file at the same time. So, uh, so Peter, I'm guessing what you're saying is if you had multiple people writing to that file uh, from different locations, that could potentially cause issues as well. So, uh, you know, this is one of those things where, you know, these things aren't uh, perfect for the use case we're putting them through. But, you know, definitely we've we've had a lot of success with. The Google assets in general, you know, you know, from everything for Docs to uh, to Sheets to Gmail, and just using things there. But Mike is saying that he always tells his clients uh, it takes about ten seconds. Uh, so yeah, and and also hit enter is a very good point. If if you just make the change but you don't enter or click to another cell or something, that won't get registered. So something else. Thank you for that's a very good point, Mike. Uh, so thank you for pointing that out. The uh, you have to make sure you've entered the data, and I know that can be tough, especially if you're going down like a whole column and you're you're changing something in in a column. When you get to that last entry in the column, you sometimes like, yep, I got to enter and go to the next one, even though I'm not doing anything else. So uh, we've definitely had cases where we do those types of remote updates, and one of them doesn't make it. Uh, so definitely something uh, you know to to keep in mind as well for here, but. Uh, so, if you have any questions, uh, we'll, we'll, you know, we'll get them in now. Uh, otherwise, we'll we'll wrap up the show for this week. But uh, we uh, we want to make sure we we get back to vMix scripting because we know that there was a lot of interest, and we want to try to address it at lots of different levels. So some things that are more uh, foundational, and other things that are more advanced. So if you have specific topics, again. Feed them to us in the comments. You can always send it by uh, email uh, to, uh, to us at you know John at streamingalchemy.tv. It'll get to me. Uh, so different ways to to let us know what you'd love to see here on the show. So I guess I haven't heard anything. So uh, I guess that will wrap it for this week. Thank you all for joining. Uh, we, as I mentioned. Uh, before we will be at NAB this year, and we will be live streaming as part of the official NAB live stream. So we will have an hour show each day, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. So if there are specific topics you'd like for those shows as well, please, we're, uh, we're always open to, uh, to feedback and suggestions here. So James, just thank you for joining. We were 
I can't tell you how much everybody here really appreciates everybody showing up uh, for us on Fridays. And it is, it's always great to have this engagement. So thank you all. Peter, thank you. Uh, thank you for calling in. And again, everybody, it's welcome. If you feel more comfortable calling in in the after show, we have callers throughout the whole thing. So please, we'd love to have you here. Thank you, everyone. See you all next week. Take care.